I'm just going to show you in this tutorial how to set up some hardware devices um, in both your DAW and just how to hook them up as far as cables wise. So the cable stuff is fairly easy. Um, what is usually the, the toughest part and is kind of a tricky tricky thing, like depending which DAW you're using, um, there's a certain way of setting it up. So the general rule should apply to most of the DAWs, but for this demonstration, I can only speak for Cubase because that's all I have right now. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll show you essentially. So in, um, in Cubase, they call it VST connections. Um, in Pro Tools, I think they call it IO settings. Um, so there's, there's different names for the, the exact same thing, but what it is, is a list of all your inputs, a list of all your outputs, some, uh, external effects or inserts they might be called, and a few other things that have to do with routing, uh, internally within the DAW. So these are your internal inputs and outputs, signals telling where the signals should go to wherever. So that's one thing you need to know um, how to hook up external devices. Uh, in this instance, because I'm recording this way, I have, um, I have a webcam, mics, and I'm screen capturing. I actually have to use this particular, um, I'll show you in the device setup, this particular DirectX driver. So all I'm allowed to do is have two channels and that's it. But so what I have to do here is switch to my interface, which is a Sapphire Pro 40. I have to switch to that to get all my channels. And then I can show you how to set up internally on the DAW um, all the different signal paths. So I'm going to switch on here. I'll have to stop all this recording stuff. But in the meantime, I'll show you how I connected all the hardware devices um, via XLR cables. So stay tuned. Okay, so here are my devices that I have. This uh, Pro MPA is a um, microphone preamp. The Pro VLA is a compressor. And this is the Focusrite um, Sapphire Pro 40 interface, the uh, audio interface. So let's take a look in the back here. Here's all the connections. So the first signal would be output on channel 5. So follow the cord. Here it goes. And that goes to the input, in this case, into the compressor. So output channel 5 to the input on channel 1 of the compressor. Now from the compressor output on that same channel, I'm going out and back into the interface on channel 5. So out on 5 and in on 5. Now for the right side, I'm going out on 6. Let's get it in focus here. There's 6, so I'm going out on 6. Follow the cord. And it's going in on channel 2 on the compressor. So there's the input. And then same thing, it just route it straight back to the same channel. So uh, output from the same channel. Follow the cord all the way to 6. And that's 6 input. So we were going out out on the interface on 6, through the compressor, then back in on 6. 
And there you go. Okay, so now that we have our hardware devices set up, if we want to go, like I was talking about, go into the device setup and switch uh, drivers to the ASIO Sapphire Audio one. Now, you will see this, this allows me to have access to all my inputs and outputs on my Sapphire device. Now we want to go into the input output settings. In Cubase, it's called VST Connections. And I have some presets that I've already uh, laid out. And you can see all 1 through 8 on the inputs. And on the outputs, you can see 1 through 10. 1 and 2 is my monitors. 3 through 10 is the extra outputs. So in this case, we're trying to set up an external uh, effects or hardware device. So we're going to go ahead and add a new one. And we're going to name this one the uh, the Art Pro VLA2 because that's the device where we hooked up to. And it's best to keep it named appropriately. And we want the send configuration to be stereo. Now we're going to set up the VST connections. So the left and right on the send bus would be the output on the interface. So you want to put left and right to lines 5 and 6 respectively. And that is the output. The return is the input. So left and right you want to go 5 and 6. And that was the input. And now look back here on the inputs. The channels 5 and 6 are now gone and that's because we have already assigned them to um, our external device here and on the output as well same thing goes okay so now that we have all the external stuff hooked up all the uh, the cable routing and we also have the DAW um, input inputs and outputs and external stuff external uh, insert effects that kind of stuff so now we're going to want to choose that specific effect that we just created and in this case it's under Steinberg and external plugins so yeah I have all these plugins sorted by vendor and then it sorts it by what type so if it's a distortion or dynamics or external and that's the one that we created so select that and then a, a little thing right here pops up. So what do you want? You you want to use this to uh, send a certain amount of gain level and return a certain amount. We're going to leave this at 0 dB because it'll capture the raw signal. It won't be um, amplifying it or taking away from it. So what we're going to manipulate is the send gain. And depending on the uh, ex external device that you have, um, sending somewhere as close to 0 dB might be way too much of a signal. In this case, I'm using a uh, in an external compressor. So if I send anything above about tw like minus 20 dB, anywhere above here, it's going to be way over compressing and it's not going to be what I want. So to control that you use this send gain and that way you get you know the proper level that you want. So uh, yeah there's that but the last thing that you have to make sure you do and this is something that kind of gave me a lot of trouble was making sure the software that comes with the interface is properly set up as well. So in this case what I normally have is the standard preset of DAW tracking and you can see on all these channels here DAW 1 and 2 that is what's being used for all of the line outputs as well as the monitor the monitors that I'm listening to so if I were to leave it like this set up the Cubase inputs outputs and external effects like this under channel 5 and 6 what it's going to do is create an infinite loop. So it's going to take the signal from one and two, which is what I'm what I normally hear, 
it's going to send it through output 5 and 6. And then it's going to return as well as output on 5 and 6. And it's going to do this weird infinite loop and you're going to get this crazy harsh harsh, harsh noise coming through and it won't it won't work the way you're trying to do this. So you have to make sure that it's receiving the signal from the DAW channel 5 to line output 5 and the DAW channel 6 to line output 6. And then it, this whole process will work. So make sure you're doing that. And uh, yeah, that should cover it. 